Eight common idioms you say and probably don't understand. So many of our everyday sayings are based on descriptions or metaphors that everybody understands, or at least that's what we assume. But when you use idioms that refer to old technology, we might not necessarily know what we're actually talking about. Sounding like a broken record. I saw another parent comment about this on Reddit, but then I asked my kid. Do you know what a broken record sounds like? Bad, he said. Scratchy. Maybe distorted. Nope. A broken record is one with a scratch that causes the needle to repeat the same section of the track. In other words, if you sound like a broken record, that means you're saying the same thing over and over. Oh, so that's why you said I sounded like a broken record when I was practicing my viola solo. I was talking about the way he kept repeating the same short phrase of music over and over. He thought I meant he was playing badly. Or Hanging up the phone. Why do we hang up the phone? Because in the olden days, your landline phone would often be mounted on the wall. You'd literally hang up the receiver on the little hook. Before that, older styles of phone would sit on the table but in an upright post that the receiver was hung on. Same idea. In books, characters will often slam the phone down in anger. In this case, you're using a phone on your desk or nightstand, where the receiver sits on top. Goodbye. Slam. Unfortunately for today's moody teens, it's really hard to end a cell phone call in a huff. Good thing they don't talk on the phone. Staying tuned. The announcer on the television used to tell you to stay tuned when they wanted you to keep watching. That's because in the days of broadcast TV, you would have to tune your TV or radio antennae to the specific frequency that carried the channel you wanted. You'd do that by turning a dial until the picture and sound became clear. So you tuned in to your favorite show. And if the announcer really wanted you to stay tuned, they might even tell you. Don't touch that dial. Going through the ringer. If somebody has been through the ringer, they have endured something difficult. The term sometimes specifically means being questioned by authorities, but it can also refer to any prolonged, stressful experience. A ringer is a device for squeezing the water out of laundry. If you didn't have a clothes dryer, you might send your soaking wet clothes through the ringer. They would come out mildly damp, and then you could hang them on a clothesline to dry. You could also use the ringer to remove soapy water before a rinse, and then use it again when it was time to dry. If you're being questioned, they want to squeeze information out of you. And, yes, you're going through the ringer, not ringer. On the flip side, there are two sides to every issue, right? Instead of saying, on the other hand, you might also say, on the flip side. Or you might say to a friend, catch yar on the flip side. This phrase also comes from the era of records. Unlike CDs and DVDs, which usually only have data on one side of the disc, records usually had grooves on both sides. A single would have the more popular song on the A side, and a second, usually ultimately lesser known song on the B side. The B side was also known as the flip side, that is, the side where you had to flip the record to listen to it. Turning a device on or off. When you turn off your iPad, kids, you just hit a button. Where's the turning in that? In my day, when it was time to stop watching cartoons, we would literally turn the knob to the off position. Televisions, radios, 
and other devices would use the lowest setting on the volume knob as an off switch. You turned the volume all the way down until you heard a click, and then silence. These knobs are also why grown-ups will yell, turn it down, when the volume is too loud. CC somebody on an email. If you want to send an email to more than one person, you might put the main recipient in the to field, and then someone else under CC. For example, you might CC your boss on a work email, or CC your partner when writing to your kid's teacher. CC stands for carbon copy, and it comes from the days of typewriters. When you typed a letter, you could put a sheet of carbon paper under the paper paper, and a second sheet of paper under that. With every keystroke, the carbon paper would transfer a lighter, but still legible impression to the bottom sheet of paper. The top sheet was the real document, and the sheet underneath a lower resolution copy you could share with someone else or file away for future reference. That save icon. What is that weird square icon that all the kids recognize as the button that saves your half-finished work? It's a floppy disk, kiddos. There were a few iterations of the floppy. With the most modern version being a three and a half inches rigid square of plastic that had a little metal door you could snap back and forth when you fidget with it. But inside that plastic case was a circle, a literal disk, of flexible material that could record data in much the same way as the magnetic tape inside an audio or VHS cassette. This inner part was what was actually floppy. Computers at the time didn't have much storage space. Some didn't have any. And there wasn't always an easy way to send a whole document's worth of data to another computer, except by physically walking over there with a disk. When you clicked the save button, the computer would encode your English essay or your MS Paint masterpiece onto your floppy disk. 